I'm Meng Mi. It's a great pleasure to be here today. Um, today I'm going to talk about the generative OS or network-based architecture for GIS anticipation. This is a joint work with uh, Kintai, Zhu Hui, Qi Zhuan, and Jia Shi. As the cost of variable devices are going down nowadays, these are the varieties of hardware that let us collect first-person visual data. Imagine that you have this type of videos and these videos are captured from first-person view of a human being that is wearing the camera. The question is, how does it differ from normal videos, such as surveillance videos where the cameras are fixed in part of the room? According to the study, there are some intrinsic properties that make this type of videos more challenging and different. Apart from egocentric videos captured from real life, there is also a boost of egocentric videos in virtual reality. These are some snapshots of what you see in VR environments. It covers varieties of actions such as driving a car, shooting, and social interacting with virtual characters. This type of videos has started penetrating to the main video stream. We hope to see more and more of these type of videos emerging as kind of available data source in the near future. Now, let's take a dive deeper into egocentric vision by looking at this specific example. Given this video frame, what, what can we learn from here? So um, we, we could clearly figure out that this man is preparing for a meal and uh, um, it's, uh, we can figure out also the head of uh, the person is oriented in the space and what are the objects that have been brought in to you. The exercising part of this talk is about the gaze or the eye tracker. I think lots of the folks here are also excited about. We've been using this type of eye trackers for collecting gaze data and studying visual attention problems. One of the projects I've been working on in the months from now was a question about can we actually anticipate where people we are gonna, gonna look at in the next few seconds? But before I share with you more about how gaze anticipation works, I had to get you believe that gaze anticipation is indeed a core idea of what's exploring. Let's first look at this example. Given this video frame, as well as the anticipated gaze location, what can we learn from this? So the way you can think about this is that we can actually pull information from this very unique first person window. Gaze anticipation could be the human intention or future behavior. So from here, we notice that this driver is not going to pay attention to the pedestrian in front in the next few seconds. Thus, the system could provide proactive feedbacks to the driver for accident prevention. Another motivation about why we study GIS anticipation problem is that it could reduce system's response time by pre-processing information. I'd like to take FOV as an example. FOV is the world's first VR eye tracking headset. FOV uses attention to manifest environment with FOV the rendering. With GIS anticipation, this could provide FOV with more buffer time to selectively pre-allocate computational resources Similar ideas of buying more time could be applied in e-commercialization where the information server could prefetch the e-advertisement e and prompt to the consumers without time delays. Niels Bohr once said that uh, prediction is very difficult, especially if it is about the future, but this won't stop us from anticipating what will happen next. Thus, the next question we would like to tackle is, can we anticipate where people will look at in a few seconds ahead? According to our study, the answer is yes. Here comes our problem formulation for GIS anticipation. Given the current video frame, we are asked to predict uh, where people are going to look at in a few seconds ahead. The basic idea is first to synthesize future frames, followed by the GIS prediction on these future frames, as indicated by the red dots. But before I share with you more about how our architecture works, I'd like to give you a taste of how our anticipated gaze will look like in the next two to three seconds. On the left, we have the ground truth video clip. This man is preparing for the meal, and uh, the red dots are the gaze locations recorded from our eye trackers. In the middle, what you see here is the future frame. This is how our algorithm thinks what the future may look like. 
On the right, it's the same future frames, but there is an overlay on top of it. The rainbow color denotes the anticipated gaze location from our algorithm. In addition to the fo foreground, moving foreground objects, there is also a complex background motions involved in ghost search invasion. Thus, we propose to split the future frames into these two components, which can learn to model the foreground and background motion separately. From here, we can clearly see that the food as well as the plates get highlighted in the foreground, whereas the, the table surface is the background. Thus, it shows kind of uniform color here in the background stream. At last, we, we use a mask to merge the foreground and background motion together to produce the future frames. The higher intensity on the mask, the more probable that the pixel belongs to the foreground and vice versa. From these results, what is amazing to me is that there is actually no supervised signals in our algorithm to teach, our, uh, to teach the model in order to le learn to discriminate whether the pixel belongs to the foreground or background. But the algorithm itself can automatically segment the foreground objects from the background. In order to get a sense of how it works, let's now take a closer look into our architecture design. Of course, the key to design our architecture is driven by several factors. Next, I'd like to go through them one by one in order to uh, provide some insights of uh, how our architecture is developed. The first factor is that the semantic and motion information on the future frame could help guide, guide the gaze and spatial. In the literature, researchers have already shown that the visual features as well as the motion information could guide gaze prediction. Thus, the intuitive idea is that we first have to synthesize realistic future frames, followed by the temporal sentence prediction on these future frames. Thus, the next question we would like to tackle is how do we have uh, more realistic future frames? Here comes a second factor. As generative of our network has shown fascinating performance on video generations, we adopt a similar strategy in future frame generation. So what is generative Wasserer network? The basic idea is this. You have two models. The generative model G generates the new data, while the discriminator D estimates the probability of the sample data to discriminate whether it's from the real data or rather from G itself. By doing so, the generator is encouraged to generate more realistic future frames. As we already know that uh, there are both complex foreground and background motions involved in ego vision, thus we propose to use a two-stream architecture for the generator to learn to separate, uh, to separately learn to model the foreground and background motions. In the end, we use a mask to merge these two motions together to produce a future frame. To make sure that the future frames are consistent with the input frame, we introduce our L1 distance loss between the first generator frame and the input frame. The last factor simply suggests that the temporal dependency of gaze states also play important roles in gaze anticipation. In other words, the current gaze location depends on the previous gaze location. Thus, we propose a 3D neural network for temporal sentency prediction. The red dots are the highest activation points on the temporal sentency maps, thus they are the most probable gaze anticipated gaze locations. All right, so far we have introduced the four factors that drive our architecture design. Next, I'd like to, uh, in the ablation study, we actually verify that these four factors are indeed useful for gaze anticipation. So we conduct our experiments on publicly available data sets using two standard evaluation metrics. Furthermore, we contribute a new egocentric data set, which is one of the largest in the object search task with eye tracking information available. We recruited 55 subjects and collected 57 videos with each lasting for about 50 minutes. This is other relevant information and uh, the sample video clip of, about our new data set. Okay, the bunch of performance numbers here are evaluated in quite a standard manner in visual silencing community. 
area under the curve show the EUC measures the probability of physician locations, while the average angular error show for AAE computes the angular distance between two gig locations. The higher the better for AUC, the lower the better for AE. The red curve is our method, which is the best. The blue curve shows the optical flow baseline. From here, we can clearly see its performance drops dramatically over time. This implies that the gaze movement is not trivially linear. The rest are conventional saliency prediction methods. In particular, we include a 2D convolution neural network for saliency prediction on static images, as indicated in the black curve. From here, it infers that the temporal dependency of gaze states also play important roles in gaze anticipation. Just to quickly mention this, Although our algorithm is not specifically trained for the current existing uh, gaze prediction problem on current frames, but our method is still the best, except for GTE pub, uh, data set. It's worth noting that our method does not require any um, egocentric cues, neither does it require any past information compared with all the previous existing methods. To wrap things up, we have proposed a new method, uh, of, we, sorry, we pro have proposed a new problem on um, gaze anticipation on future frames. In order to tackle this new problem, we introduced the four factors that drive our architecture design. And then followed by that, we introduced the overview of our architecture, which is a generative was or network base. In addition to its amazing performance on GIS anticipation, we also test our algorithm on the existing GIS prediction problem on current frames, and our method is still the best. Feel free to download our source code and dataset from the internet. Our poster ID is 34. Feel free to come to our booth and we can discuss more about it. Thank you. We have time for maybe one to two questions, very short ones. It's not easy to ask questions. <laughs> just walk it out. <laughs> okay, I have a short question. I notice your the input is a single frame, right? Yes. So yes. do you guys try using all the like uh, previous uh, histories, like multiple frames as input, rather just one single frame? Uh, yes, that's a good point. Uh, we actually only formulate our problem in such a way that we are only given the current frame, but I think the performance will definitely be better if we can incorporate all the past information. Yeah, we, we can kind of like try it out maybe in the future work. Good, thanks.